welcome to Gurukul lecture series. In today's series, we will discuss about the role of Doordarshan as a public service broadcaster. But before that, let us try to understand what is public service broadcasting. Public service broadcasting can be understood as broadcasting made, financed and controlled by the public and for the public. It is neither commercial nor state owned and is considered to be free from political interference and pressures from commercial forces. Public service broadcasting is a prominent tool in bringing forth the informed social change in people and nations through its widely accepted platform. It is intended to meet community needs which exist beyond traditional geographical and institutional boundaries. It has traditionally been the dominant form of broadcasting in much of the world and even though with commercial broadcasting taking over much of public service broadcasting due to high viewership and resulting revenues, its importance cannot be undermined in a developing country like India. Michael Trackey a British American academician and producer with a speciality in public service broadcasting gave the eight principles defining public service broadcasting in 1998. According to him, PSB should have these factors. Number one, universality of availability. Number two is appeal. Number three, provision for minorities especially those disadvantaged by physical or social circumstances. Number four, serving the public sphere. Number five, a commitment to the education of the public. And number six, public broadcasting should be distanced from all vested interests. Number seven is broadcasting should be structured as to encourage competition in good programming rather than competition for numbers. And number eight is the values of broadcasting should liberate rather than restrict the program makers. Now in this lecture series, let us discuss about the main functions of a public service broadcaster. Public service broadcasting must be concerned about a broader set of clientels and a much larger mandate. It has to meet the complete media needs of all, including people living in every nook and corner of the country with very limited media options and exposure. It also has to cater to persons who are either watching television or listening to radio on a community set in an isolated part of the country. We must recognize that in India, where there is multiplicity of ethnicity, religions and languages, it becomes imperative for such a service to take into account the media needs of the minority audience, whether they are ethnic, religious or linguistic. The public service broadcaster needs to be concerned with developing taste, promoting understanding, spread literacy and development, create informed debate and empower the disadvantaged. Major issues that commercial broadcasters generally ignore. This then is the real purpose of public service broadcasting. Through PSB, citizens are informed, educated and also entertained. When guaranteed with pluralism, programming diversity, editorial independence, appropriate funding, accountability and transparency, public service broadcasting can serve as the most credible voice of democracy. Now let us understand that what is the significance of public service broadcasting in India. 
you all know that India has a number of private television channels. Now keeping that in mind, why do we still need a public service broadcaster? So here are the reasons and the significance. Pure commercial broadcasting does not meet the full needs of informing, educating and entertaining the vast sections of population in any nation, especially those living in remote corners of towns and villages in many countries. Television rate points and also saliability of programs play a major role in deciding the content of shows in commercial broadcasting channels. Similarly, the private FM radio stations target the upmarket and more urban radio listeners. The private channel delivers to an audience and is not a vehicle for delivering new ideas, information and education to its viewers and listeners. So, because of this reason, for citizens, citizens of the country who need to be informed and educated about the aspects like opportunities in various vocations, improvement in technologies or availability and growth in various sectors, these channels have little to offer and these channels may have found high entertaining value among the mass audiences that today reaches small towns and even villages. But this content simply does not provide the kind of specialized education and information people from this strata of the society require. Even if commercial broadcasting channels do offer some content that is of significance, relevance and importance to the people in the far and remote corners of India, the low purchasing power of these citizens make this content inaccessible to them. With pure commercial broadcasting channels, the information and education required by this vast segment of population in our country remains unfulfilled. It is the public service broadcasting that fills this vacuum by ensuring that every citizen stays informed educated and connected with the latest happenings and events taking place in the country or opportunities that may be useful to him or her in the course of life. The importance of public service broadcaster thus goes beyond entertainment to enhance political, social and cultural citizenship. The most important function to promote rational critical debate, development news in the times of corporate mass media, which focuses on feeding to the entertainment taste of the audience. The public service broadcaster has a responsibility to ensure the diversity of information relevant to the rural, urban, minority populations as against commercial media whose focus generally is on urban middle or high class sections. Public service broadcaster also has an important educational purpose. It has to cater to the masses, to the public who want to know more about these sectors. Now let us try to focus on the features of public service broadcasting. At this point, I would also suggest that you must look at the website of Doordarshan and All India Radio and Prasar Bharti to know more about the features of PSB and its relevance. So what are the features of the PSB? First of all, it should be accessible to everybody. Secondly, it should serve the public interest in all of its shapes and thirdly emphasize on quality, balance and impartiality. Fourth function is there should be provisions for minority. Also commitment to education of the public, 
freedom to produce challenging and controversial programs if needed be, independent from political and commercial interference which is considered to be very important and also forum for expression of national cultural identity. So keeping all these functions in mind, how does the public service broadcaster perform and what are the responsibilities? Public service broadcasting is essential in India and must be seen as a right of all citizens. It must provide a platform for free discourse and debate, debate and while its content must empower people. For the citizens requiring the information and education of growth, opportunity, technological advancements, news and more public service broadcasting's relevance remains unnoticed and untouched. Public service broadcasting has the responsibility to provide services to a public comprised of so many individuals with different cultures, languages, wide ranging differences and also broad similarities. Public service broadcasting is obligated to act responsibly in all news and current affairs programming as an essential service to the public in the duties and privileges entailed in the exercise of citizenship. Thus we can say that it is a social responsibility. The public service broadcaster must also be concerned about a broader set of clients and has a much larger mandate. It has to meet the complete media needs of all including those of a villager who has a very few media options. Such a person is either watching television or maybe listening to radio. The PSB should also take into account the media needs of the minority audience, whether they be ethnic, religious or linguistic. The public service broadcaster needs to concern itself with developing taste, promoting understanding, spread literacy and development, create informed debate and empower the disadvantaged both socially and economically major issues that a commercial broadcaster would rarely address. It should also provide services that celebrate social diversity and also facilitate so social cohesion and is obligated to act responsibility in programs dealing with the many dimensions of cultural identity, cultural life and cultural practices. They should provide a forum for public discussion and debate, a platform for cultural sensitivity and social tolerance and a medium for recognizing commonality as well as pluralism. Keeping all this in mind, we should also remember that public service broadcasting has a responsibility to provide services to a public that is much more than a market and consumers and thus is obligated to act responsibility in monitoring market practices. A public service broadcaster has the responsibility to use the public's money in ways that are efficient, effective and transparent. We must not forget that public service broadcaster means the use of public money and that is how it has to work more efficiently and carefully. They are supported by public money and are obligated to use that money wisely and in ways that provide 
the greatest value for their owners. Now let us discuss about public service broadcaster in connection to Prasar Bharti. Prasar Bharti is India's largest public service broadcaster in an and is, is an autonomous body and is one of the largest public service broadcasting corporations in the world operating more than 67 television studios and 420 radio stations. Prasar Bharti was set up by an act of parliament in 1997. It runs the national television and radio networks Doordarshan and All India Radio which is also called AIR. It is administered by the Prasar Bharti board which is tasked with fulfilling the broadcaster's statutory mandate of informing, educating and entertaining the public while promoting ideas of national integration. Prasar Bharti is mandated to provide content that serves the human development needs of India's opportunity deprived population. A substantial part of its programming relates to education, health, agriculture, women's issues and so on. Prasar Bharti's radio and television arms have phenomenal reach and penetration. You would be surprised to know that All India Radio has a reach of nearly 99.2% of country's 1.3 billion population. DD with its 1416 terrestrial transmitters has a potential reach of more than 90% of the population. So what is the Prasar Bharti Act says? I would request you to look at, look at the Prasar Bharti website to read about, in, uh, about it in much detail. Here we are going to discuss some of the parts which come under the Prasar Bharti Act. The Prasar Bharti Act provides for the establishment of a broadcasting corporation to be known as Prasar Bharti to define its composition, functions and powers. The Act grants autonomy to All India Radio and Doordarshan, which were previously under government control. The Act received the assent of President of India on 12 September 1990 after being unanimously passed by Parliament. It was finally implemented in November 1997. By the Prasar Bharti Act, all property, assets, debts, liabilities, payments of money, all suits and legal proceedings involving Akashwani and Doordarshan were transferred to Prasar Bharti. You will be keen to know then who funds Prasar Bharti. Let us now try to understand that. Prasar Bharti is primarily funded by the state and does not earn any license fee. It generates some revenue of its own although this falls far short of its budgetary needs. From 2016 to 17 the government's grant to Prasar Bharti was nearly uh, 3156 crores. The same year the total revenue earned by Doordarshan and EIR was nearly rupees 1,282 crores. But what about the independence of Prasar Bharti? Is it independent? Let us have a look at that. While the law grants full autonomy to the public service broadcaster, its board needs the approval of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting on matters such as new products, projects, recruitment, creation of new posts and sale or modeling of assets. And what about the Prasar Bharti board? So there is a board which looks into the functioning. The Prasar Bharti Act stipulates general 
superintendents, direction and management of affairs of the corporation vests in Prasar Bharti board which may exercise all such powers and do all such acts and things as may be exercised or done by the corporation. The Prasar Bharti board consists of chairman, one executive member, one member from finance, one member from personnel, six part-time members, director general of Akashwani ex officio, director general Doordarshan again ex officio, one representative of the union ministry of information and broadcasting to be nominated by the ministry and two representatives of the employees of the corporation of whom one shall be elected by the engineering staff from amongst themselves and one shall be elected by the other employee from amongst themselves. The President of India appoints chairman and the other members except the ex officio members, nominated members and the elected members. The board shall meet not uh, less than six meetings yearly, but three months shall not intervene between one meeting and the next meeting. So what are the functions and objectives of Prasar Bharti? The primary duty of the corporation is to organize and conduct public broadcasting services to inform, educate and entertain the public and to ensure a balanced development of broadcasting on radio and television. The corporation shall in the discharge of its functions be guided by the following objectives like upholding the unity and integrity of the country and the values enshrined in the constitution. Safeguarding the citizens right to be informed freely, truthfully and objectively on all matters of public interest, national or international and presenting a fair and balanced flow of information including contrasting views without advocating any opinion or ideology of its own. Paying special attention to the fields of education and the spread of literacy, agriculture, rural development, environment, health and family welfare and science and technology. Providing adequate coverage to the diverse cultures and languages of the various regions of the country by broadcasting appropriate programs. Providing adequate coverage to sports and games so as to encourage healthy competition and the spirit of sportsmanship. Providing appropriate programs keeping in view the special needs of the youth. Informing and stimulating the national consciousness in regard to the status and problems of women and paying special attention to the upliftment of women. Promoting social justice and combating exploitation, inequality and such evils like untouchability and advancing the welfare of the weaker sections of the society. Safeguarding the rights of the working classes and the advancing of their welfare. Serving the rural and weaker sections of the people and those residing in border regions, backward or remote areas. Providing suitable programs, keeping in view the special needs of the minorities and tribal communities. Taking special steps to protect the interests of children, the blind, the aged, the handicapped and other vulnerable sections of the people. People prom promoting national integration by broadcasting in a manner that facilitates communication in the languages in India and facilitating the distribution of regional broadcasting services in every state in the languages of that state. Providing comprehensive broadcast coverage through the choice of appropriate technology and the best utilization of the broadcast frequencies available and ensuring high quality reception. Promoting research and development activities in order to ensure that radio broadcasts and television broadcast technology are constantly updated. Now let us quickly have a look at some of the important committees of Prasar Bharti. First was the Chanda Committee. Chanda Committee was formed in 1964 when Indira Gandhi was signed by minister under the chairmanship of A.K. Chanda. The report was submitted in 1967. The recommendations included a separation of TV and radio units which resulted in the separation of AIR and DD. It also recommended that programs related to national interest 
must be broadcast on a priority basis. Then is Varghese committee, the Janta committee, uh, Janta government had appointed a working group on the autonomy of the Akashwani and Doordarshan in August 1977. The chairman of this committee was V.G. Varghese. The committee submitted its report on February 24, 1978. This committee's main recommendation was formation of Akash Bharti or the National Broadcasting Trust both for AIR and Doordarshan. The committee noted that the people want an independent corporation because the executive abetted by a captive parliament misused the broadcasting during emergency and this must be prevented for all times. This was a bold recommendation of this committee which wanted substantial constitutional safeguards for the recommended body. But these recommendations were not even supported by Janta rules. The report was later rejected. Then Minister L.K. Advani commented, the committee has recommended the creation of an independent constitutional entity parallel to the judiciary on which the legislature has no control, so we can't accept it. Third committee was P.C. Joshi committee. Congress appointed P.C. Joshi committee in 1982 whose main term of reference was to prepare a software plan for Doodarshan. But this group also emphasized on the absence of functional freedom in Prasar Bharti. This committee said that the Ministry of Information Broadcasting should be recognized and a separate board on the lines of railway board should be created in which only people with professional expertise should get an entry. So, slowly a consensus developed for a television authority of India as a public trust and under the control of parliament and office with only experienced professionals. The recent committee is the San Petroda committee, a multi-member committee appointed by the government has recommended amendment to the act of 1990 to give effective freedom to the public service broadcaster Prasar Bharti with administrative and financial powers. The committee headed by Sam Petroda had made recommendations such as reorganize the Prasar Bharti board to make it a professionally managed body, give the organization the power to hire skilled professionals without requiring government approval, develop a funding mechanism for Prasar Bharti to address the need for autonomy with financial accountability, set up a regulatory body to ensure public accountability of the organization with respect to all content broadcast on its television and radio network. It should be a subcommittee of the Prasar Bharti board. In addition to government, Prasar Bharti should uh, generate funds through autonomous sources and through commercialization of a part of its activity. Public broadcasters in India already have the first mover advantage of reaching out to the most remote areas of the country and hence cater to the viewership which cannot be compared to that of private channels. The recommendations of Sam Petroda committee assume huge importance in this scenario. The recommendations if implemented well have the potential to turn around the public broadcasters in India, the government uh, have taken some of the recommendations into account. Now, let us look at some other points which are related to the uh, uh, Sam uh, Petroda committee. It had 11 expert groups under this committee. The expert groups worked under the Prasar Bharti government relationship, technology, business development, finance, HR and organization, programming and content, archiving, global initiatives, presence on social and new emerging media regulatory mechanism and expert group on a comparative analysis of public service broadcasters. Now let us move to the other section which is related to Doordarshan and history of Doordarshan. Doordarshan as the sole television, television channel of the country was the face of and witness to India's transformation of becoming a global leader in digital communications years ago. It started off as a makeshift studio where the key journalists beam their voice and visuals through a small transmitter aiming to develop the nation with its new technology. The experiment became a service in 1965 when Doordarshan began beaming signals to reach television sets in living rooms and around the country's capital. 
New Delhi. By 1972, services were extended to Mumbai and Amritsar and then on to seven other cities by the year 1975. All this time, it was part of the national broadcast of All India Radio. On April 1, 1976, it transited to become a separate department in the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, though still serviced by All India Radio, especially for its news. Since then, the organization has grown to cover the length and breadth of the country, painstakingly caring for the interest of all linguistic, geographical and cultural groups and promoting social, cultural and educational development of the country though an array of transmitter networks equipped with studios and facilities to produce programs even in regional languages. Doordarshan is the source of news and information services to almost every geographical community, all occupational groups and each community. It has been able to do so because it has no single market to pamper. This feature enabled it to become the country's prime television service provider and it has become the symbol for celebration of its diversity and uh, for its unity. Now let us see what are the objectives of Doordarshan. To act as a catalyst for social change, to promote national integration, to stimulate a scientific temper in the minds of the people, to disseminate the message of family planning as a means of population control and family welfare to provide essential information and knowledge in order to stimulate greater agricultural production, to promote and help preserve environmental and ecological balance, to highlight the need for social welfare measures including welfare of women, children and the less privileged, to promote interest in games and sports, to create values of appraisal of art and cultural heritage. But apart from all these things, what makes Doordarshan unique? Doordarshan's broadcasting along with its creativity make it an ideal role, uh, role model which had numerous centers, an array of transmissions and hundreds of studios. What makes it unique is the fusion of modern digital engineering hardware and the software of a three-tier programming service, service which spreads nationally, regionally and even locally, having a wide appeal across the nation. It has captivated millions who are glued to television to watch anything from news to cricket, math, telecasts, exhibitions of art, culture and Bollywood to educate on the arts and sciences alike, from catering to a vast farming community to catalyzing the growth of industry, commerce and also education. But do you know what are the most crucial facts about Doordarshan? Doordarshan is a part of Prasar Bharti and is the largest broadcasting company in India. It has a range of studios with huge infrastructure. Doordarshan extends TV, radio, mobile and online services across metropolitan regional areas as well as internationally through the Indian network and radio across India. Color television in India was introduced by Doordarshan in the year 1982 with the live airing of the Independence Day speech by the then Prime Minister of India Indira Gandhi and then the Asian Games of 1982. Duryodhan had a humble beginning on September 15, 1959 in Delhi with a test telecast using a temporary studio and a small transmitter. In 1965, regular daily transmissions were started by Duryodhan as a part of the All India Radio. By 1972, TV services were extended to Mumbai and Amritsar up to 1975, only seven cities across India had TV service and Doordarshan was the only service provider in television in India. On 1st April 1976, the television services were separated from radio and the office of the All India Radio and Doordarshan were managed by separate DGs in Delhi. In 1982, Doordarshan came to, into existence as a national broadcaster and reached all parts of the country. The first program to be telecast on Doordarshan was Krishi Darshan, which began on 26 January 1967 and is remembered as the longest running television program. This program immensely added to the green and white revolution in India, 
and has helped Indian farmers transform and reinvent their ways of farming. Now let us discuss the story behind Doordarshan's iconic logo. I am sure you must have seen that logo. Dayashish Bhattacharya, an alumna of the National Institute of Design, is the man behind much loved DDI. He along with eight of his friends at NID were working on a government project in Ahmedabad when Doordarshan moved out of being a subject of All India Radio. He designed the two curves depicting the yin and yang and it ended up being one of the 14 stories that were submitted to his teacher Vikas Satwalekar, the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi chose this over the designs. Though the design was upgraded through the 80s and 90s, students from NID were asked to spearhead the same. Another NID alumnus, R. L. Mistry, worked on the animation for the original symbol. He made copies and then shot them under a camera, rotating them till they reached a final form which was eventually called the DDI. In 1973, the signature tune of Doordarshan was being brought to life by Ustad Ali Hamad Hussain Khan during his Chennai recital in an hour and a half long inauguration ceremony of Doordarshan television channel held at Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi. Ustad Ali Hamad Hussain Khan was the one who first breathed life into that sound sounding tune. Now let us lis listen to that music so that you are reminded of the Doordarshans. So, I hope you were able to listen to this mindful signature tune of Doordarshan which was designed many years ago and even now people remember it with lot of enthusiasm. As more and more cities started receiving the signals of Doordarshan, the number of its viewers kept increasing. It became a truly powerful medium. But a medium of what? This was yet to be decided. The then Prime Minister at the time understood the power of this new medium. The task of composing the tune was interested to star maestro Pandit Ravi Shankar, but he realized that the actual tune of Sare Jahan Se Achha was of a bit longer duration. Working with Ustad Ali Ahmed Khan, Ravi Shankar finally came up with a variation of the original tune and created what can truly be termed as the new national tune of India. So now let us have a look at some of the most popular programs of Doordarshan. As per the data given on the website of Doordarshan, currently Doordarshan operates 21 channels out of which two are um, all India channels, DD National and DD News, 11 regional language satellite channels and sports channels, four state networks and also DD National known as DD broadcast regional and local programs. The DD News uh, provides 24 hours news broadcasts. These are the national channels of Doordarshan, DD National, DD News, DD Sports, DD Bharti, DD Urdu, DD Kisan, DD India. And these are some of the national regional channels, DD Arun Prabha, DD Bangla, DD Bihar, DD Chandana, DD Girnar, DD Madhya Pradesh, DD Malayalam, DD Northeast, DD Oriya, DD Podigai and DD Punjabi, DD Rajasthan, DD Sahyadri, DD Saptagiri, DD Uttar Pradesh, Yadagiri, DD Kashir. An interactive service of Tata Sky shows Doordarshan programs which are not otherwise available on Tata Sky or other channels. Some active Doordarshan channels are DD Kashi, DD Gujarati, DD Punjabi and DD Chandana. Doordarshan also has a service called DD Direct Plus which is DTS service and is free of charge. Doordarshan India also broadcasts internationally through a satellite and is available 
across more than 146 channels around the world. From a modest beginning in 1959, Doordarshan now has the global reach and continues to inform and entertain viewers of different generations across geography. Let us quickly have a look at some of the popular shows on Doordarshan. Hamlog was India's uh, television first soap opera and also the first serial drama. It is the story of an Indian middle class family of the 1980s and their daily struggles and aspirations. It was created on the lines of a Mexican television series when Cunningo 1975 using the education entertainment methodology. The idea of the TV series came to the then information broadcasting minister Vasan Sate after a Mexican trip in 1982. Soon, the idea for Hamlok was developed in collaboration with writer Manohar Sham Joshi, who scripted the series, and filmmaker P. Kumar Vasudev, who went on to direct the series. The title was uh, the title score was composed by music director Neil Biswas. At the core of its struggle, Hamlog had human uh, woman empowerment woman into it. The show's principal female character Bhagwa, uh, Bhagwanti, Badki, Manjali and Chutki all were in a constant struggle with their status and also their identity. Then we can also discuss about Ramayana. Ramayana is in uh, Indian historical drama epic television series which introduced the concept of Hindu mythology to Indian television and went on to become a national classic eventually clocking viewership of around 650 million telecasts in 55 different countries and becoming the highest grossing show on Indian television by some distance. Ramanan Sagar had written and directed the 78 episode series which brought the country to a standstill every Sunday from January 25, 1987 to July 31, 1988 at 9.30 a.m. It was a TV revolution as for the first time Indian audience watched an epic on television. Its popularity was so high that the cast of Ramayana was given the status of gods India today called it Ramayana fever, where public transports, trains, buses, inner city trucks would become empty when the program was telecast and people would assemble in villages around the sole television set to watch the show. And it actually was a program the entire family could watch. Mahabharata. Mahabharata is a 94 episode Hindi series which originally ran from 2nd October 1988 to 15th July 1990 on DD National. It is the most successful Mahabharata series ever produced on television. In one brilliant stroke, Chopra's Mahabharata became contemporary in comparison to Ramanand Sagar's Ramayana. Coming soon after the Ramayana series by the late Ramanand Sagar, the Mahabharata series by B.R. Chopra became a must for every television viewer across country. And these are the names of some of the popular TV shows on Doordarshan. Ye Jo Hai Zindagi, Buniyat, Bharat Ek Khoj, Chitrahar, Karam Chand, Yom Kesh Bakshi, Vikram Aur Betal, Malguri Days, Ocean, Jungle Book, The Peacock Calls, University Girls. And one of the flagship programs was Krishi Darshan about which we discussed earlier. I would like you to read about it more so that you understand the role of Doordarshan uh, in uh, as a public service broadcaster and also its role in the agriculture sector. Krishi Darshan is an Indian television program on Doordarshan aimed at disseminating agricultural information to rural farming audiences to stimulate greater agricultural production. It helps the farmers through disseminating modern agricultural technology such as suitability of agroclimatic condition for particular crop or cropping pattern, suitable varieties of seed and its treatment, 
use of fertilizer, soil and water management, plant protection measures, market information related to supply, demand price, trend, import and export, forecasting etc. are of immense use to the farmers. One can say that the extensive network of Doordarshan and cable is found to have a profound influence on agriculture. It first aired on, aired on 26 January 1967 and obviously is the longest running television series in India. Interestingly, in 1967, the first experimental satellite communication earth station located in Ahmedabad was operationalized to establish that a satellite system can contribute to the national development, ISRO was clear that it need not wait for its own satellite to begin application program, while foreign satellites could be used in the initial stages. However, before trying out a full-fledged satellite system, some controlled experiment to prove the efficacy of television medium for national development was found necessary. Accordingly, a TV program on agricultural information to farmers Krishi Darshan was started, which received immense response. The success of Krishi Darshan gave way to the plans for a national TV system using a satellite to reach rural and remote audience. Chitrahar was another popular program on DD National featuring song clips from Bollywood films. The idea behind this was to also promote literacy because there were lyrics of the songs that were written with the uh, telecast of the song. It was an emerging way to promote literacy especially in villages. This initiative of Doordarshan has been technically supported by the Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad. Now let us quickly have a look at the contribution of Doordarshan towards society. Doordarshan has contributed significantly towards acceleration of socio-economic change, promotion of national integration and stimulation of scientific temper in the country. Its mandate is to carry messages on population control and family welfare, preservation of environment and ecological balance, highlighting the need for social welfare measures for women, children and the less privileged and to promote games and sports and the artistic and cultural heritage of the country through its programs. Doordarshan has also increased the understanding of the people regarding the issues and also develops common feeling for the need for social change. The present outreach of Doordarshan has created awareness and appreciation of the socio-cultural ethos of our different regions. It has contributed to breaking the social barriers and inculcation of scientific temper in our masses. Exposure to media leads to the appreciation of social and cultural ethos. Information bridges the gap of understanding between the people and helps them to unite for the cause. Doordarshan has done this job by contributing to the information exposure. Television has played a prominent role in the social lives of Indian women. Doordarshan has proved as a major source of learning and entertainment for both educated and ed uneducated Indian women. It has, it has helped the new economic patterns to emerge that are responsible for making, making women acquire a new status and a new social stature. Women centric shows have greatly motivated Indian women to stand up on their own feet and become self sufficient. Doordarshan as a mass medium has helped in creating awareness amongst different sections of the Indian masses about various schemes by government for their welfare. I hope you were able to gain certain points from today's lecture. I would like to um, uh, express my gratitude uh, to the website of Doordarshan, All India Radio and Prasar Bharti from where some of the data was taken. I would also like to 
express gratitude to various other sources which goes as follows. Uh, these are the names of some of the books and also the websites which were referred to while working on this particular lecture series. All the best to each one of you.